Ban the song, in fact, ban every song. I'm totally on side with England's Rugby Football Union, who are going to conduct a review into whether or not they axe the singing of Swing Low, Sweet Chariot from all future Pommy rugby tests. And of course, while we're at it, we should also ban that very same P word I just used. The origins of Swing Low are both contested and murky. The man who wrote it, Wallace Willis, is often described as a Choctaw freedman. These people, indigenous to North America, were officially adopted into the Choctaw nation sometime around the 1860s, when it's also generally accepted that the song was written. The Choctaw, confusing and embarrassingly so were also allied with the Confederate States during the American Civil War, which by definition means they fought on the side of maintaining slavery. Even more significant is that they also have a tribal history involving conquest and the enslavement of rival tribes themselves. So good luck to the review crew now charged with untangling all that mess and deciding whether an annoyingly catchy tune called Swing Low is appropriate or not for English rugger fans to sing at Twickers. Because there is no absolute right or wrong going on here, it is merely and clearly a matter of personally held opinion derived from whatever version of whoever, whoever's history that you prefer to believe. Coincidentally, the same accusatory fingers could also easily be pointed towards the unofficial All Blacks anthem, Kamati. The haka, so intrinsic to every encounter that we're in, is now 100% as much a marketing tool for the All Blacks as it is an inspirational kickstart to each individual test match we play. In fact, the haka is now owned as much by our global sponsors as it is the team, the money men insisting on its performance as part of the overall entertainment package. Ugh. The reason I'm raising this is because Kamati is not and never was a nationally popular choice. In fact, many tribes abhor its use given the history of the man behind it, Tado Praha. So if anything needs a review and a subsequent ban, then maybe it's us. Or at least have the same discussion that the Poms are having. Oops, sorry. I meant the English, my bad. This is a debate to be watched with much interest given that the outcome will undoubtedly provoke as much argument as the issue itself. All I know is that there is no easy answer, nor one that will be universally accepted, and there never will be. And that's simply because rewriting history doesn't also mean history is necessarily rewrited, if you get my drift.